Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and today we're doing a, well starting a multi-part series where I'm going to go through my papers, my stash, everything that I own to create a bunch of page kits that kind of coordinate together. You can see that I have several paper pads chosen here. I have a goal of sort of working on my, De my December, my DC album, so my Washington DC album. And some of these papers kind of inspired me to do different layouts in there. So I pulled these out again to kind of mix and match them together to create some page kits. Now normally I do like a monthly kit. Um, I've been doing them for every month for a while now, but I thought it'd be nice to have like a stash of these ready to go for my December, my December, my Washington DC album, um, which is a 12 by 12 album. So I have five paper pads. Today we're gonna be going through and discussing some paper ideas and how I plan on sort of sorting these. Um, I know I've talked about some page kits before, but I figured you guys would like that again to kind of start off the new year right by getting our stash in order so that we can scrap away. To do this part of the um, stash kit building, I have some paper clips here. Um, this is just my paper clip jar, so I got these ready to go so I can clip my papers together. Um, but that's how I'm gonna store them for now and then put them all together. So since all of these page kits will coordinate by paper, I'll also have coordinating embellishments that kind of go together with all of them, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of taking the guesswork out of matching the papers out of a larger kit by separating them. We might separate the embellishments out a little bit more, but we'll see how that goes. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to store them afterwards. But today we're going to be sorting through some papers and making some page kits. So like I said, these are all for my DC album. So I have a travel uh, paper pad here called Fly Me Away by Recollections. I have a Simple Stories Life in Color paper pad. This one's by Craftsmith, the Conservatory paper pad. This one's DCWV Minty Lace, which has a lot of specialty papers in it. And then lastly, I have the Maggie Holmes Bloom collection. Now, luckily my DC album covers a ton of different topics from museums to historic sites to just food that we eat in DC. So there's a lot to cover here, hence why I have so many options. Um, but I think these will really mix and match well together, so we'll see what we can create. Um, I really like to use paper pads, but of course I do have open 12 by 12 like open sack paper as well. So we might be pulling some of those in. So I'm going to start with this one, I think, conservatory. I didn't get to work with this one as much as I wanted to last time I used it. So I'm just going to flip through here and kind of pull out something that reminds me of a DC story. And if there is one that reminds me of one, I do have my post-it notes here. They're right here at least some post-it notes for now, that I can write an idea on um, so that we can use them. I'm going to start with this one. I like a good neutral. So we have this black and white floral, and I'm actually going to jump over to the Maggie Holmes paper pad because this just screams Maggie Holmes to me, that sort of vintage look. And then I'm going to pull one out of here. Of course, you could go through the whole paper pad and pull out pieces that remind you of something, but I think one-on-one's easier for me to explain to you guys why I'm picking certain things. Now this says botanical gardens on it, which caught my eye because we did go to some botanical gardens. Um, but it didn't really go with the page that I'm kind of building for this one. Really like the wood grain. I'm always scared to use wood grains because I'm afraid that I'll never have them again. And obviously there's a lot of florals in Maggie, Maggie's collection, so it might be hard for me to mix and match. And of course, if you already have these cut apart, you might be able to throw some of those in there. It looks like I'm going to strike out with the Maggie Holmes paper pad. I thought it would work, but there's too many florals in there for me to combine with this floral. So next I'm going to jump over to this Fly Me Away paper pad, which again has that vintage look, but um, not too much. This yellow could work fine. Oh, those are my way. Sorry, I'm working on limited dust space. I think this would look great with it. Um, I'm going to put that one in the maybe pile for now. You can kind of tell that this has an off-white background. And sorry for the shadowing, that's probably a little bit annoying, but I think that one would be fun. There's a lot of great options in this one. I kind of like that one too, the blue clouds. I've got an old map, this green color would be pretty. Now I also want to make something that I know I can use relatively easily. Um, I know I do have trouble. I think I'm going to pull out this arrow paper pack. Oh, but I really like the pink too. I think we'll pull out both of these. Um, that way we have a number pattern and more of a geometric pattern with the arrows. And I think three pieces of paper is probably my max per kit, page kit, that is, because um, I do plan on putting like six by six papers with these again in the next step. Um, so right now we're just pulling out 12 by 12 papers we like together. 
So here's my first three. I like the variance in color and I like how we have a pastel theme here. Um, but I do like the stark contrast between this darker floral with these pastels. So we're going to pair that one together with a simple paper clip. You want to make sure that your paper clips are either coated with a plastic so that they don't get rust on your papers. Um, you also don't want to make sure they're too tight because they can damage your papers that way as well if they're too tight. Um, but there's plenty of other ways to store paper. Uh, <laughs> like in those 12 by 12 bags you could do um, but I'm still waiting on those in the mail so let's check out this paper pad now now that didn't remind me of any specific um, encounter that we had that I would scrapbook about but if it did I would have put a note with it just kind of describing what I wanted to put on there or if I had a title for it I really like this iridescent um, polka dot paper so I'm going to pull this one out and I think this is the only paper pad that I pulled out that has specialty papers in it although the recollections one might so this one has the pearlescent um, sheen to it so I think I'm going to try Maggie Holmes again again I bought this paper pad and I'd never worked with Maggie Holmes before so it was kind of a left field guess for me if it would work or not I kind of like those bows with a lot I think it's like that shabby chic look uh, but I think this one's going to work really well. Oh, this looks so cute with that. Okay, we're going to pull out this floral. And I'll try to do a page kit where I do all, like, three different paper pads for all pieces of paper. But I'm not sure I'll be able to do that. But we will see. Don't want to bring in another polka dot because I already have a background polka dot, even though it's very subtle. Um, and then we don't want to bring in another floral because we already have a floral. So a text background, a wood grain background would be nice. Um, or something like you this would be nice too just gotta decide i also want to kind of include the cut apart sheet but i think i'll just cut that up for the embellishment section i also think this would be very nice but i think we're going to go with the geometric let's see i'll go through one more time again the bows would still work we don't want floral cut aparts would work of course but we wanted a full sheet of paper here so i think i'm going to go with the bright pink um, this would be more of a layering piece, so this would go around the outside edge of this floral piece. Again, you can of course include five... I would include two to five sheets of paper. And, oh my gosh, I just ripped this. I didn't even notice. Whoops. Um, I would include two to five sheets of paper in your kits. And if you know this giant pink paper won't inspire you, then put the one that will in front, um, which would help perhaps make you pull out that kit. And again, I'm setting this all up for the same album. If you're trying to do page kits just for your stash, you might be able to work um, just from one paper pad, but I don't like it when my albums have the exact same feel throughout the entire thing. It's just a weird thing I don't like, is when the whole collection is used throughout the same album. But I know a lot of people like that, so of course use one paper pad if that's what you're comfortable with. Now this paper pad by Simple Stories has a lot of primary colors in it, which none of the other paper pads that I pulled out really do. So this one's going to be a little bit harder to work with. Now this one, I know matches, ooh, it's starting to rip. So I know this one will match a yellow paper in the Fly Me Away paper pad. And you can kind of see as I flip through the more you'll see me make matches a little bit quicker. Um, so that yellow is not exactly the same, but it is so close that it'll work fine. And I would almost pair these two busy patterns with a cardstock. Now I didn't pull out my cardstock for this, mainly because I'm already out of dust space. Um, but I think these two work great together and can make a really simple layout. Something like this where this edge is cut off, and then just some photos. Really simple. I am going to go through the simple stories again, because I think there's some flat color um, pieces as well. So let me pull out these so I can see both of them at the same time. I'm just flipping through again. I'll use the cut aparts later on to mix and match. I could bring in this yellow, but that'll clash extremely with my other yellow. So we have this light blue, which is perfect. It kind of combats both of the loud colors to kind of soothe them down. So there we go. Again, this is a completely different feel than the last one. Although I will say that probably all of these will include a floral. That just tends to be my style, um, is floral. So we shall see where that goes. And I also like pulling paper clips that are similar colors to this color scheme. That just makes my heart happy. Okay, so we have three page kits done so far. Um, gonna take a water break. And then we'll be back to building. So I don't know how many page kits I planned on doing for this. 
particular project. Um, obviously, I could do it till all the paper pads are gone, um, but that seems a little extreme. And I don't know how many pages my DC album will be, and I don't know if all of these will fit my DC album theme. So I have a blue grid pulled out. I think this pink would look great, but I know there's a lot of other beautiful papers in this paper pad. With all the butterfly theme things I've done in my life, you figure it'd be easier to pick out these papers to use. There's just so many butterflies in this kit. Ooh, we like the dark navy gold foil. That's nice. Love that one too. This is just a beautiful paper pad. It's one that's hard to work with for me personally, but absolutely beautiful. So I think I like these little guys here. I like how the patterns are similar in size. So I would pair this with a larger pattern or a plain cardstock to kind of combine them together, which I th think one that would go really well with these two is actually the text one from this paper pad. This one would go really nicely. And I think I might pair a fourth paper in just because the it's still a little blah, like there's not enough blue. Does that make sense how there's not enough blue pulling out of this one? So let's go to Maggie Home, see if we can add another paper pad in here. I don't know if there's a baby blue like I'm looking for. Or we could add stark contrast with this floral. Hello, that's what I needed. I didn't even know I needed it, but I like that. Again, another dainty pattern, but it's along the similar lines of this size. So we have two larger patterns and then two smaller patterns. Let me know if there's ever any questions you guys have when I'm making these. Um, I know that I go kind of fast, but real-time videos um, help people understand a little bit better. So again, I figured there'd be a floral on every one of these. Um, so when I go through my page kits for my album, ideally I'll just go through here and look to see what I like best. Now I'm going to try to do one without a floral, which will be hard because I have like four floral paper pads. Um, let's see, let's start with minty lace again. Which this is a great way to kind of sift through your stash and get excited about it again, is when you pair it with other things. This one's going to be hard to match, so I'm going to leave it open like that, not tear it out yet, and go through this one here. This pink would look nice. This blue kind of matches that blue. But this is a very intricate pattern, so we want to make sure we pull something out that'll not overwhelm it. Because again, this is very hard for me to personally work with. So I can understand why it might be hard for someone else to work with it. I like the suitcase theme, but I also, we don't like pack to go to DC. It was just really close to where we lived. So let's see what we got here. These postcards are really fun. I think we're gonna try this. I really like these softer colored ones. Again, a cut apart sheet, but Maybe there's, I think I'm going to put those two together. Again, not all of them would be in there, but two of them would be. Got some pieces that I left out. Oops. If you guys haven't seen, I made a video about organizing my paper pads, um, my 12 by 12 paper pads, and included eight and a half by 11 pocket pages in each of them to store the extra pieces. So that's another tip for you. So I think I'm going to tear this one out now. And one of my goals in 2019, I think, will have to do the paper pads because I definitely shouldn't have bought more in 2018, but here we are. So I think one of those postcards would look great, just one of them. I'm unsure about which one, so I'm not going to pull it out. Now I'm going to go back to look through this paper pad because I need something that's kind of calm to go with this lace detailed pattern. Now while this is calm, it's also very loud, so we don't want that. This heart one could work. I just don't really like the pink shade in it. Now this, this is great. This is actually the same exact design, which I don't think will pick up well on camera, but it's in a very, very light pink tone. But this will bring out the color in the postcards. And despite it being the exact same pattern, at least it looks like it is, I guess I can't really see it very well. So I'm not sure it's the exact same, but I would imagine it's pretty close. Another water break there. Um, but you can kind of see this pastel theme will go well together for like a museum layout. So I'm going to put those together. Um, we did buy some postcards at DC. Did not send them, but we did buy some. So maybe that'll be some inspiration for that page. 
Um, so there's one without florals. I mean, barely without florals, but it was without florals. So you see a lot of my favorite pads are cut into a lot. I could be using these scraps to um, pick some things out. Of course, I'm going to let that one be there. I don't want to neglect any of these guys. I did pull them all out to try to use them. Um, I remember when I first got this Simple Stories paper pad, I used it like crazy. It was just, I really liked working with the pastels. Really great paper pad for Disney layouts because of the uh, contrast in the primary colors. Ooh, this baby pink is fun. But I also like all these florals. Again, with the florals. Let's go back to Maggie Holmes. Again, this is a very difficult for one for me to work with. It's just not, I really loved all the patterns. It's just not my style, if that makes sense. Like, I love vintage style, which is what kind of this emulates, but it's not, it's not what I traditionally work with. I think we're going to mix this bow one with the pink striped one. And again, these are supposed to be DC themed. I have no idea what I'll do with bows and pink stripes, but there's hope. There's hope that I could use that somewhere. But like this would look so cute together. So cute. And if they don't end up making it into the DC pile at the end, based on all the embellishments I pull out, maybe we can do something else with it. Now, I just had an idea. I think I'm going to pull in the navy with gold polka dot out of this paper pad because, hello, gorgeous. That'll be gorgeous together. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm. I know I saw it in here somewhere. <coughs> also get some water. I'm running out of water. But here's the navy with gold polka dot. Oops. I almost knocked over my water. Again, running tight on space. But how beautiful would this be, guys? We got a polka dot. We got a diagonal stripe. We got our graphic design. Gorgeous. I'm going to put the bows in the front and paperclip this together. Let's do this purple paperclip. Again, not in the color. Oh, wait, no, this one. Do you guys remember these paperclips? No one makes those kind of paper clips anymore. It's almost like a sign here um, document marker, but let's go back to the butterflies. Let's address the butterflies. I haven't been talking about the butterflies. I love the butterflies. I really do. They're just not... I almost, I'm almost positive we saw something related to butterflies in DC, but I'm not 100% sure. We went so many times. I'm just not sure. We definitely went to the Botanical Gardens, but I'm pretty sure I scrapbooked all those photos, so... Let's do this floral um, and try to pick something else out out of a different paper pad to go with it. Let's try the travel paper pad first, although I'm not feeling good about it because of these brighter colors and this is more of a pastel paper pad, but I want to show you guys it can be done. So this color green is on here, I just don't think the patterns go very well, so we have airplanes and then flower buds. Um, this polka dot would work. I just think they're both too busy of a pattern to be put together. I do like this light blue cloud paper, but I think I have a scrap version of it that I might pull out. Let's see. Here it is. I think those two could work together. Maybe not, though. We'll keep flipping. Keep flipping through here. Kind of like the globes, kind of don't. Kind of like the numbers, kind of don't. Okay, let me uncover that some. But imagine just this light blue color. Not really into the polka dots or the stripes. Again, this is the perfect shade of pink, just the wrong pattern. Yeah, like I mentioned, this vintage one's going to be very hard to fit into. I'm going to hop over to the Minty Lace collection again. And if you guys didn't know, I don't own any of the embellishments that coordinate with these paper pads. Um, so it's kind of like I'll have to make everything for myself, or pick out everything myself based on everything that I have in my kit. But I hope you guys are finding this informational. So here I just pulled out this neutral. These neutral backgrounds match perfectly. So we got a little heart pattern with this beautiful floral. Then we have this blue color, which kind of comes left field. There's barely any blue in this floral. So I'm going to look through the minty lace a little bit longer, maybe pull out a third option. Now this wood green is actually very good. If you can tell, this has a specialty like clear but holographic like wave pattern, which I'm not in love with. And I know there's a wood green in the Maggie Holmes collection. 
which is kind of itching to me that it wants to be chosen. <laughs> the pearlescent circles would work as well. I just think the heart is almost like a polka dot, so we don't need something as repetitive as that. This one would also work. It's got the holographic hearts. Again, we don't need two sets of heart patterns. So we're going to jump over to Maggie Holmes and pull out that wood grain, which breaks my heart, but we got to use the wood grain sometime, people. we got to use that. We'll see if I can find it. Wood grain, wood grain, wood grain. We might find something else we can use. You never know. I definitely think the wood grain will work nicely. Again, I'm not really finding any stories yet. Um, we went to a lot of museums, some art museums. Like this, this reminds me of an art museum. A lot of them remind me of art museums. So we'll have to see where that brings us. Um, I'm going to put floral in the front, wood grain, and then the blue with the hearts at the back so that the blue doesn't fall off. Beautiful. We used a very difficult pattern too. So this is one of those patterns you fall in love with which you don't know how to use. Hopefully I can get through all these page kits in 2019 to show you guys how I use them because I know a lot of you um, have trouble using them if you make them in advance without knowing what will be with them or what story will be with them. But we'll address that in this like prepping for 2019 series where we discuss what we're going to do with our plans. Now this paper is just so beautiful. Let's try to pair it. Again, there's going to be a floral in everything. I picked out like five floral paper pads, so I can't help it. But I will try to use them in unique ways so you guys can get a little bit more inspiration than the traditional floral background or white paper with a little sliver of floral background um, sort of style. Really like the idea of this grid with the floral. I want to see what shade yellow was in here because um, I think the yellow paper in here will match perfectly. Not perfect at all. We'll see if there's another plain um, sheet of paper. Now this green goes surprisingly well with the leaves. It's not a green, it's more of a teal. Let me see if I can get it. Like surprisingly well. I really like that. It reminds me of like an old sofa. And then I really like that grid with it, so I'm going to pull that out. Even though it's a cut apart sheet, we can just use part of it, or maybe the wood grain will go well. We like these options. We're expanding our horizons. We're inspiring each other. Okay. Loving this. Now I know this will be very difficult for me to use, so we'll see if I can ever get to it. So if you picture it like this, with the floral back there, and the grid, or I mean the grid back there, and then the teal. Again, not a perfect match in teal, but it sort of goes together because you can see this is from the same color family, um, just a different shade. So again, we'll clip this one together. I'm trying to make sure I get coated paper clips just so my paper doesn't get rust or anything on it. Time for another water break. I'm now officially out of water breaks because I ran out of water. But I think what I'm going to do is look at all the ones we have built. One, two... Three, four, five, six. So six in 23 minutes. Wait, I think I counted wrong. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, eight and 20-ish minutes is like a great accomplishment. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, I think I'm gonna do a bunch more off camera. One, because my voice really hurts. And two, because I don't wanna waste your time just doing the same thing over and over. But if you guys would like more page kit making, like the paper selection, let me know in the comments down below. I think in the next step of this series, prepping for 2019, um, we shall be doing building this kit out more. So bringing in supplementary papers, the cut aparts that I talked about, the embellishments, and we'll see where that takes us. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know which one was your favorite or what you learned the most or what, what's something that you learned in this video. Um, I know you guys wanted more educational content, so I hope this is on the right track. Um, but again, let me know what you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here are my eight kits. I plan on making some more. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you did by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you're new. We want you to continue to watch and interact with the ladies in the comment section. But I hope this was very helpful for you guys. And I hope you guys are excited to see more of this series. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.